What a fun and disastrous week of fantasy football for half of you and the other half. Today we're talking about all the studs, all the duds, and we're going to get into who crushed and killed Mike's soul on today's episode. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, leave a comment, let us know how your week went, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome oh, in. Monday, October 10th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, Jason Moore. I'm Andy Holloway. Back with you as week five comes to a close. We still have a Monday Night Football game. We do. Patrick Mahomes, Derek Carr. I hope they come through for us. We'll find out shortly. But uh, a lot to talk about on today's show. Have some reactions to the weekend. Injury news to talk about. Yeah. Seems like there's going to be a couple of very big pickups in the waiver world, mm -hmm. uh, which we cover that tomorrow. But we'll talk about the studs and duds, the injuries today. A lot going on. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to chatting with Mike about Taysom Hill at some point today. <laughs> oh, man, that was a lot of fun. That's a lot of points. Yep. Yep. Um, I knew it would come up today. Oh, did you? Did you? The 38 <laughs> fantasy points give you a hint? I figured he would be discussed at, yeah. some, point. at, at some point. At some point. At, you know, probably later, but... Um, but probably right but now. But maybe uh, right this second. I, great. There was let's, a, let's highlight the Adam Troutman part. The, <laughs> well, was I was going to say, dude, look, what can a guy do to get your respect other than throw a touchdown to the tight end that you love and no one else believes there, in? There was a play early in the day <laughs> where Brees Hall looked amazing. And I just said, I go, man, I love Brees Hall so much. And Mike goes, you love Brees Hall the way that I hate Taysom Hill. <laughs> He said that early on, and then Taysom Hill decided to destroy Mike's soul. And then yeah. after the two touchdowns, after the two touchdowns, yeah. I see Mike celebrate, and he he throws his hands up because Adam Troutman got a touchdown. You know, and he didn't realize he threw he it. No, oh, and then he's like, "Oh, come God. on!" At the moment he scored, I did not know because we got all the TVs are rolling, and you just okay. Well, Adam Troutman scored. Awesome. I love. I, I like. Yeah, you I like rooted root for Adam Trout. I've look. I've moved on. I'm not, I'm not saying this is a thing. It was like, yeah, my my guy of yeah. It's going to be a thing forever if he ever a, scores again. Got a touchdown, and then it was, of course, he's like, wait Taysom a minute, freaking Hill. did Taysom Hill throw that? <laughs> did Taysom Hill throw that touchdown? I melted into well, a puddle of 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 flesh. I mean, much much like the uh, I guess camaraderie built around the Kyle Pitts meltdown here on the show. I had so many people that had pivoted from Kyle Pitts into Taysom Hill. Nice. Uh, effectively just throwing up the don't talk to me hand to Mike, the fantasy hitman. Yep. And pivoting into Taysom Hill and just auto winning the week. I mean, that is well, it, just like you did. You picked well, up Taysom Hill, right? Oh, I did. Yes, I did. I did. Yeah. Um, and uh, for most people that picked him up, it was an auto win yeah. at the tight end position. So it would have been. An auto win. Yeah, it would have been. Um, we won't. We don't need to talk about that. <laughs> I, I've always said I'm more focused on our listeners, Jason, oh, than okay. I am my own roster. That's big of you. So uh, we're good. We're good to go. Let's react to the weekend with some Monday Pun Day. Well, let's just kick it off here. Al Borland started him. It's Jared Barf. Barf. Oh, how about a good one in Boss Allen? I see we gave me this one. <laughs> Taysom Mountain. Yeah. That, that yeah, ain't no pretty, hill. Pretty good. How about Beast Tall? Okay. Or Breeze Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, baby. Or Conk Conk Goose. <laughs> or a classic Dalton Sharts. Mm, Boy, classic. what a bust. Kryler Algier. Or what about that guy? Christian Jerk. 
Where's your fantasy points, you jerk? Uh, how about this guy? Yardage leader on the week. Babe Davis. Oh, or my guy, Chase Deadmans. He truly has passed on for fantasy are, football purposes. They're phasing him out. You know, he's oh, like, no, no, there is no ing. Well, no, that is a phased. Well, I just mean, you know how like well, sometimes you take a medicine, right? And then they're like, you can't stop that medicine called turkey. Yep, right. You yep. have to like uh, gotta wean. Yeah, you got to step it down. Didn't yep. want to get the shakes, so you just gave him two carries or so. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you got to phase a guy out that you just gave a ton of offseason money to. So, but Raheem Mostert's another storyline. We'll get into that today sure. on the uh, studs and duds. Jointhefoot.com. That's our fantasy football community. You can go check out the bonus weekly show. We've got premium perks. We just debuted the Foot Clan headquarters and upgraded a ton oh, of stuff, ton of hot. resources. Um, the fantasyfootballers.com is the website. Yeah, if you're part of the the Foot Clan, you've you know been in the Megala Bowl, or you know you might not be aware of how many tools you have at your disposal. But that's what the Foot Clan HQ is going to help. Just click the Foot Clan. Big bright button on our website now that'll take you to the HQ and you can see a, a newly organized, easy to uh, navigate through set of all the tools that can help you through everything in season. I mean, the three of us use these in our uh, playing lives every yep. single day, so it, they're very valuable. And if you haven't checked them out or you're not part of the Foot Clan, check them out. Uh, we're we're uh, here to win championships this year. That's right. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. We've got news to talk about, but I, I'm just looking over at Deucer's Alley. Careful. And, no, no, it's too late, Al. I, You know, you had two backwards hats over there, and then Al's wearing the forwards cap. I Oh, what a nerd back there. All buttoned up and everything. Which is funny, because I'm usually the backwards hat guy. Yeah, you started the trend, and now I'm you're just... I'm usually the cool guy. Other guys would never, <laughs> never have. I, was, I thought you were going to go to the Mac hat. Jones. Uh, sorry, Al. You're you all right? We're good. Your Packers okay? They're they're gonna make it. <laughs> all right, all right. That what? Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's. I guess that won't come up in the general studs and duds, but losing to the Giants doesn't feel good. The four and one Giants, one of the best teams in, yeah. in football, in seems the best like, division of football. Seems like everyone's losing to the Giants. I don't think you should be too sad. Sure. It's kind of. I mean, I I'm gonna give credit to Daniel Jones for doing just enough in these weeks. Just enough Jones. Yeah. That's that's yeah, his nickname okay, for me. Okay, just enough Jones. Okay. All right, here's some news. Traylon Burks was placed on IR with the turf toe injury. It's toe turf. <laughs> right. None of his replacements helped anybody. No. Russell Wilson dealing with a partially torn lat muscle near his right shoulder. His plan is to attempt to manage practice reps and play through the injury. Underwent a PRP injection. That's uh, the plasma injection. On Friday, hopes it will heal faster. I, His ego is fully intact, but the injury could have been a reason why those... Yes. It sounds like it's been going on for a few weeks, and this is... I, I, I had said in the office, I've never been pleased to hear a player is actually hurt because the, the, the disappearance of Russell Wilson by from, from what we saw in Seattle to this year made no sense that a, that a player can of his age and caliber can just vanish that quick. And it's not like he's not 39. He's not 40 years old. So and you're just, giving him a complete pass. I, I'm I'm Cause he least, got a pass all last half of the year last year yes, for, for injury. Yes. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm like, well, a great Russell Wilson, you know, once we get this figured out, he's, he's good to go and he'll be elite again. The situation is just, okay, at least something makes sense. And let's like once he's healed up, then we can reevaluate the situation. So this just gives you hope that he's not done forever, yes. Yes. that he'll get to a better spot. Now, that being said, this injury, uh, despite the PRP injection, is probably going to linger. Uh, Betts was saying, if, you know, if, if they don't shut him down, it is likely to continue to affect his deep ball power and accuracy. That is, I mean, you can't play what you've been getting, you know, for 75% right. of this season from Russ. And that was like one of the things like where it just kind of the, you know, the final straw of that. You know, I think it was Jerry Judy uh, had a nine route on the outside in this, in this past uh, Thursday night game. And Russ just overthrew him by 15 yards. And it was like, wow, 
If Russell Wilson really is, he's cooked. Like he, this guy can't play football anymore. But now we know it, in his throwing arm, he has a serious injury. It makes him throw it farther over well, it, over his receivers. It just means that you're not accurate. Uh, yeah, I'm not giving him a pass. I also think he has much, much better wide receivers in Seattle. I mean, that's a big factor here. It could be, yeah. I mean, DK Metcalf uh, is is just a, a a step up from anything he has in Denver, and then Tyler Lockett. I mean, he's we've known for yeah. a long time how good of a player Tyler Lockett is. Yes. Uh, so I think that's part of it too, and, and and all of it, play calling. Nathaniel Hackett's to blame. We, you you don't have rapport. Um, there's there's a lot of reasons why. This hasn't worked, and this is just tacked onto the back end. I think as a band aid. And I can't give a free pass for, uh, you know, a hurt throwing arm does not make you miss reads. And you know, th there's been so many plays where you've watched, and there's a guy open on one side, and he's thrown into double coverage on the other side. Is it? There's there's a lot going on. Sure. Uh, the Panthers have fired head coach Matt Rule. Oh, murdered! Oh. That's it. We don't get a. We don't get to make fun of Matt Rule anymore. That was the last time. Matt Ja Rule. We did. They have it. lost twenty five games in a row when their opponents score seventeen plus points. That's one in twenty seven under Matt Rule. Well, seventeen points is just it's insurmountable. Yeah, right. Say, that's that's a pretty low <laughs> bar. That's not you know. Oh, they've lost all the games when giving up twenty seven points. You should be able to win some at seventeen. Jay Glazer said teams will now be calling the Panthers trying to trade for some of their players that they hope Carolina will Ooh. look to stockpile oh. picks during a rebuild. Um, Come on. I mean, Panthers should do that. Let let DJ live. The, the season's over. Let him live. Matt Rule had a seven-year contract made it two years. So, I mean, he's still going to get good a bunch for of him, money. man. Didn't I, I believe he still out. owed uh, what forty million? Coaches' contracts are <laughs> usually guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, so. They are. Uh, what was it, Ed or Orgeron from LSU? Did I say that name right? He, if you see his interview when they fired him, he's he's so funny because he's just like – Is he the, the real, real deep Yeah, he's the deep voice. voice. He's just like, you know, they, they owed me $17 million and they said we're going to pay you all of it. And he's like, where do I sign and where's the door? <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, it's like, let's go. Good, good I mean, for him. I Matt Rule's going to go out and get a huge <laughs> collegiate job for tons of money and then get checks in the mail from the Panthers. That's amazing. Like, yeah. I'm I'm having a bad time. You're having a bad time. You want to give me $17 million and I'll leave? That's, that's a great deal. That's a great time for all. Uh, Rashad Penny, this is big oh, news. Man. Fractured yeah. fibula. They believe surgery is coming regardless of whether surgery is coming. It's still likely to end his year, especially for fantasy players where the year uh, cuts off earlier. He's a free agent after this year. Kenneth Walker is going to be a huge part of the discussion tomorrow, although yep. heavily rostered. You're talking 70% sure. range uh, when you average out a lot of leagues. Um, there are There's another name that we'll mention too, but – Kenneth and Ken, Kenneth Walker's gonna have an opportunity. Oh, for sure. He'll he'll probably for those leagues where he is on the waiver wire, he's the biggest pickup of the entire season, front to back. I don't think there'll be another one that large. The the Seahawks offense is better than we thought it was going to be. Um it, but I just feel so bad for Rashad Penny. He signs that one year contract, like a prove it deal, and then he's proven it. He's looking great. I didn't you know, this last week we had some disagreement about whether or not you can start him against the Saints. And in the beginning of that game, I felt dumb for being like, yeah, you shouldn't start him because he looked, he looked great. great. Was uh, running, Would have had a good game. Absolutely would have. Um, Ken Walker had a good game in his stead, uh, but Rashad Penny is done. Speaking of running backs that were done yesterday, James Conner exited with a rib injury. Cliff Kingsbury said he believes Conner will be okay. I don't know if that's the best thing for the Cardinals. I mean, James Conner, the man, obviously I don't want him to be hurt, but he has not looked very good this year. Yeah, Darrell Williams also left the game. It was like it Eno. was it was left to Eno Benjamin. He was the last man standing, so I'm sure he'll be brought up tomorrow too. Yes. That that's the other name. Dalton Schultz exited with a right knee injury. Yeah. Keeps going for him. Baker Mayfield, walking boot, X rays negative, MRI, everything's falling apart for Carolina. Tyreek Hill exited due to a foot injury. So he was stepped on, Mike McDaniel did in a boot after the game. Concussions. This is a this is a worth a uh, discussion on concussions sure. because the league implemented new concussion protocols. Uh, they wanted them before Sunday. The Tua controversy was the provocation for these discussions. 
But what you're seeing now is an abundance of caution being displayed by teams that don't want to be perceived as making mistakes with relation to concussion care, which is probably the right call for these players' long-term health. Yes. But it will mean that situations like the Teddy Bridgewater one where he was cleared by concussion pro protocols and they just kept him out of the game. You know, and then you had many other concussions this week that could, you know, I think you're going to see more of that, more players that stay out for the duration of the game and you're going to see more players miss a week. I completely agree with you. This was part of why I said I was going with or without I was going to play uh, Khalil Shakir this week before we knew what's going on with McKenzie he was trending in the right direction, but I thought it possible with the new concussion protocols you're going to see people just if they've got a concussion I'm going to now presume that they'll probably miss the next week. And some of these this week were were more on the on the bad side. Yes. Yeah, at least per, what you saw with your eyes. And yep. and so Pat Fryermuth went down to a concussion. This is his third documented concussion. Just since he's been in the NFL. I mean, that's he's, right. He's uh, probably had him before. Yeah, that's that. a year and a half. Three concussions in a year and a half of football. You're, he'll probably miss a while. And then Chris Olave, who uh, managed to catch a touchdown yeah. while being concussed, while being unconscious, uh, like he he got knocked out. I would say he's at high risk, and they already missed Landry and they missed Michael Thomas in New Orleans. It's it's one of those things like you'd love to come out and say. The teams care about the players, but we know that that's not always the case, right? They, they don't always put the players' health first. But what will happen is accountability for the long-term health of the player will be thought about when they miss games, when they let them have another week off. It'll be, you know, at least you can point back to, hey, we gave this guy another week off. When he gets the next concussion, we're not responsible. And, and unfortunately, that motivates just as much as anything else. Sure. Damian Harris exited with a hamstring injury. Ramondre had a monster game. Yeah, and I mean it was right at the beginning. Like Harris missed the he Harris would have had a great game. Mm -hmm. I I thoroughly believe that. Uh, proven by Ramondre Stevenson having a monster game in that situation. Like the Lions' defense is not good. It's it's and their offense did not travel to New England. And he was ruled out pretty early after the injury. Right. It didn't take a long time to say, well, this hamstring tweak is he's not coming back in. So Ramondre could have a full workload by himself. Ty Montgomery is not going to I, – I don't know. I don't think he's able to come back yet in week six. Can you check that, Kyle? Cleveland, Chicago, and the Jets for the next three matchups. So um, – as someone who invested in Ramondre a couple weeks ago, he is set up Get for ready. success. He's had, you know, opportunities even before this week, 17 and 19 the previous two weeks, 27 this week without Damian Harris. This team is built on defense. We don't know the health of Mac Jones moving forward. Ramondre is a volume guarantee. One more injury to talk about T Higgins. This was just brutal. Questionable. When he entered week five. But he was getting in like limited practices all yeah, week. Um, he basically, Zach Taylor said, could have been used situationally in the second half. I don't know what situation you would use him in other than a game that was that close. <laughs> when you're, you know, down around the goal line. <laughs> that, that is a great point of like, like that's you were you were in the game. Uh, you had a chance to win the game. So wouldn't that be the situation where you want your elite wide receiver to go in if he could actually play? Well, I, I feel like especially the uh, the plays down by the goal line where Mixon didn't get in, like if you just want T. Higgins to stand there on the outside and be gigantic, yeah. that would have been a good situation. Yeah, there is. He could not have gone. I mean, that's just liar, liar, pants on fire. If there were situations that there couldn't be more of a situation, you, need, you lost this game. You lost the game and had opportunities to use him. Uh, so that, that to me, says he's just uh, the the injury is a bigger deal. So you're going to have to monitor that this week. And uh, Hunter Renfro tonight off the injury report will play back after a concussion, yeah. uh, which kept him out two additional weeks from the concussion in the Cardinal game. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Let's get into it. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right, we did have uh, a ton of huge plays this week. That was kind of the headline. There were a lot of 50-plus yard plays. 
Uh, and those began with Gabe Davis from the two-yard line and a bomb from absolute monster quarterback guarantee every week, Josh Allen. 20 for 31 for 424 and four. Uh, ran for 42 yards. There are times, I guess most times this season, where it feels like he's a man among boys. Sure. Both from just like a dissection of the defense standpoint and then just when he wants to run, it, it's like the last resort, and yet it should it could be the first resort for any quarterback. Um, he almost did all of that in the first half, so he yeah. didn't even have to play the second half of the game. Gabe Davis back with from injury. I mean, the weapons that he has, Khalil Shakir scored a touchdown. Isaiah McKenzie wasn't even out there. Yeah, didn't he, even use Devin Singletary. They, they were they were missing pieces. I, you, it's funny because you would think at a game, you know, this is we've seen Devin Singletary have ooh, phew, excellent, excellent. Um, we've seen Devin Singletary have a couple of really good games, and those were in the close games. Normally, that's in, right. In a in a in a non Buffalo Bills NFL game, you want the game where your team is up by a ton to run the ball, to run the clock. You know, a 38-3, to three, that should be where your Devin Singletary thrives, but that's not the case. They're like, well, we don't need him that much. Let's just use him 50% of the snaps. This is a game we can get that, you know, that big bum in here, <laughs> Zach Moss, or check out the new rookie. Um, but, Who scored? Yeah, so it, it's just funny. The running game in a game that you win 38-3 to three is irrelevant. Also, he is, uh, I'm going to say he hit for the cycle in the first five weeks. Quarterback two, four, three, five, and now one. Oh, fantastic. I was worried it was going to be six. So, uh, no, I don't know if that's possible for Josh Allen to do that. Jalen Hurts went 26 for 36, 239. No passing touchdowns yet again. Don't need him. Two rushing touchdowns, 15 for 61. Plays Dallas next week. Uh, there's no one that's sitting Jalen Hurts, but that'll be a, an interesting challenge for like, if you're building your lineup, I might not plan on a ceiling game from Hertz next week. You're going to play him. You might get it. But I'd be looking at, uh, you know, Dallas's defense is just really mm -hmm. good. Um, he's on pace to shatter the single-season rush attempt record of 176 by Lamar. <clears throat> Some of the hits he takes, though. I know these guys, I mean, they hold up when they're a certain size. But, man, it there were a couple that I was like, you talk about getting your bell rung and missing a game and a half. Hopefully he can stay upright. Geno Smith, 16 for 25 for 268, three good, touchdowns. Good for you, Geno. By the way, the, the pass, uh, did you see the second touchdown to Lockett? Yes. Best pass of the day. Unbelievable. Yes. Unbelievable pass. If It, it fell into like three it, defenders. Three defenders into his arms in the end zone. You couldn't have put it anywhere else. Uh, Geno, he's got, he's got it going. He's, he's got the confidence right now. and The he, arm looks good. The elite weapons you talked about for Russell Wilson, I mean, that he previously had, it, it it's fun. and you're like, you're like, man, how could we have all been so wrong? But, I mean, we were betting against Geno Smith. We yeah. were betting against a, a guy whose starting career flamed out really quick, and then he was just a, a situational backup, but... Yeah, it's, we already had won the bet. See. The bet had been won by the league. It right. was the bad bet. It was it was he missed. He has been a top ten fantasy quarterback the last three weeks. He was the quarterback two last week, currently sitting as the quarterback three this week, and nothing that he's doing seems like it can't be replicated. Right. You know, it's not like he's having crazy broken plays. He he's rolling out of the pocket, hitting guys on the move. He looks really solid. Had another touchdown to DK Metcalf that came back mm -hmm. due to a hold that really didn't impact the play downfield. Kirk Cousins, big game that uh, turned into a hold on for dear life game. Carson Wentz, 359 through the air. There's your quarterbacks. At the running back position. Oh, man. We, oh. Got, we got some big performances this week. Austin Eckler. Yes. <laughs> Do you, you mean just wrap Derrick Henry in there too, Jason? Oh, let me get, yeah, the, let me get the fist pump. Go ahead. Yeah, Derrick Henry, the snow fell in Vermont, and you <laughs> fell in the end zone. Yes. Multiple times. Uh, if you want to know, I mean, you might not know this. Jason has those two players on his fantasy team. Right. Well, also in the in the, our DraftKings lineup this last week. So it was a very it was a double up. Yes, yes. You you mentioned that on Friday that you were going to either be very happy or very upset. Today. That's right. Uh, big games from, I mean, Eckler's back. I mean, 16, wait, 
16 for 173? Dude, he dominated on the ground. I didn't realize it was that high. He had that big 70-plus yard run. Yeah, where he got caught. Embarrassing. You hear that, Austin? Embarrassing. Yep. Also, awesome game, and that touchdown run was incredible. Uh, and and he's and he lost like I mean Josh Kelly got into uh yeah got into the end zone he did but the best part of this game was Sony Michelle I believe Sony Michelle played on two snaps that's, hallelujah that's, that's the best thing for everyone oh <laughs> yes. wow from the rafters goodness he didn't even have the cap on backwards and he yeah. said that. Uh, Leonard Fournette, yeah. 14 for 56 and a touchdown, and then you got the uh, – Yes, you did. I feel like that drop only works if it gets, like, more than eight targets, and he got 11 this week. Yeah. The dump truck filled up the back. Just, it's a two loads. I mean, he, he had to go back. Yeah, he, uh, he he went to the dump, poured it out, came back for more. Two halves of the game, two <laughs> – Two trips to the dump, and every time that guy's catching a pass, Mike's over there. He doesn't miss any of them. He well, you dumps said, like a truck. Every <laughs> time? Oh, yeah. Every oh, good. Uh, big game for Fournette. Nice to see. Uh, Brees Lightning. Oh, yeah. Brees Hall had uh, a monster reception. Just two targets. And he had been a target leader with Eckler. Eckler ended up with just four targets, so they're still close. But one of those targets turned into a 79-yard reception or something like that. Something like that, and then there were there were multiple plays. So he he got a, a rushing touchdown later. Had almost a hundred on the ground, a hundred through the air. So an absolute monster performance. But it could have been so much bigger. Yes, there were two different incredible plays that Brees got all the way down to the one and didn't score. And on both of those plays, they brought in Michael Carter, who got a one yard touchdown. So I'm not unhappy with. 200 yards and two touch and, and a touchdown but man that could have been i, f I well, even they, better. and they they blew out the dolphins who were down to a third string right. running back so an, an undrafted i think uh, you would have more targets for Brees, is what i'm saying i'm not taking anything away i think he actually would have had a lot more targets sure. in a game where they're having to come back i i would like to institute a rule here because i like the the Brees hall was just a real highlight of this where a, a player makes an incredible play goes forever gets down to the one they're winded. They need a break. I get it. Michael Carter comes in and gets a touchdown. You're not allowed to celebrate. If you're Michael mm, Carter yeah. and you get pulled in from the one because you're the superstars in front of you did all the work and then you just kind of get into the end zone of one yard, you, you're you, not allowed. You can't you're celebrate. You're saying Michael Carter can't yeah, celebrate? I'm saying no. Michael Carter cannot celebrate. He's not that. responsible for this. No, he should run that ball to Brees. He should take that ball <laughs> and run it over and give it to Brees and then be like, dance, buddy. Say, thank you. This is for you. I agree, I Mike. I mean, I blame the, the cardio. Oh. I mean, Brees needs to figure this out. <laughs> the cardio. If one of us ran that play that Brees Hall did, we wouldn't just need a break. We would we would be done. That would be the end of the game for us. We, uh, we did have Austin Eckler on the show, and we asked him specifically, like, right. those plays, <clears throat> are you upset? You know, when you have a big play and it, it goes down there and then they bring someone in to score your touchdown, he may, he said, he's like, no, we need that break. Yes. And so that's why coaches, if you're listening, call a timeout, burn yeah, it. Yeah, oh, yeah, we yeah. did have one of those. Burn it and just wait and then put your guy back in. Yeah, you had like a quarter break and that put the guy back in on the field when he wasn't going to be there. Those are always nice. Uh, but Brees Hall, I said it last week, that was going to be your last chance. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that was going to be your last chance to get him um, – because the manager of Reese Hall drafted him for a reason and was waiting for this day to happen, and then it happened. Uh, so you're not getting him on the cheap. Derrick Henry, the big game. Nick yep. Chubb. Nicholas. 17 for 134 Nicholas. and two. Nobody's a, a bigger threat for a 35-yard touchdown than Nick Chubb. I He's, mean, if you put him in that zone, that's like the goal line for Nick Chubb. Yeah, the, 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 there's the Kareem Hunt zone, which is inside the five, and then everything – Back in those 95 yards. That's the Nick Chubb zone. Dalvin Cook, two touchdowns, 18 for 94. A gift of a touchdown from uh, Justin Jefferson. Alvin Kamara, welcome back. Yeah. Six targets. You love to see it. 91 receiving yards and then 23 for 103 on the ground. Uh, and uh, most people are like, ah, Taysom Hill stole everything from him. Yes, he did. And those people are correct. So... Just, just remember all the Taysom Hill touchdowns that you're that well, we're all happy about. Uh, those are not Alvin Kamara. Well, touchdowns. Let, let me ask you a question, Mike. Is it? It's a simple question, okay. kind of like an A B. All right. Is it uh, A more likely or B less likely 
that Taysom Hill continues to do that when he succeeds and scores four times, and every time he touches the ball, it's great for the team. And wins the game and single-handedly wins the game single-handedly for, for the uh, team. Yeah, more likely. I did. I'd uh, Look, I still won't play Taysom Hill because I'm a man of honor in principles, but during the breakdown with when you had uh, – when you knew it wasn't going to be Jameis, I think you're more likely to see Taysom Hill in close. So that will that will be an interesting thing f- for the team to decide. Once your starting quarterback is actually there and you're inside the five, do you go wildcat with Taysom Hill? Don't not, know. Not just Jameis, but I mean, if if they're missing Chris Olave sure. and Jarvis Landry and Michael Thomas, and they have a you know a, a, an absence of weapons, you will have Taysom Hill more involved in more packages. Do you think that there will be a point this season? that Taysom Hill's tight end eligibility comes into question on platforms? I, I did, I mean, during my, uh, you know, r- raging like a toddler yesterday because of how unfair all the Taysom Hill stuff was going on. Raging like a toddler. I mean, yeah, I, just, it's, I feel personally attacked by him. Uh, but... <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, the I, I totally forgot what we were talking about. Oh, I, uh, the, the, I know the, what you were going to say. The tight end eligibility. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of like everything that Taysom Hill was doing, he was snapping the ball. I know he, was, he still went out and lined up as a tight end, but every time that he's doing something, he's the quarterback. So it's – I don't know how you change the eligibility because it, it, people will freak out. It'll be this whole big thing, but like just like – it feels disingenuous to mark him as a tight end when all of his offensive production comes from him being a quarterback. It's very difficult because he obviously lines up all over the place. Right. And um, he had he had a monster block freeing Kamara on one of these plays where he came across the formation. But he hasn't even seen a target since. No, I know. You should really let him rush the passer because I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> sure he would dominate at that. He probably yeah, you're probably would. right. He, he just um, – he does a good job of reading – with that wildcat of just finding the blocker and turning it on. He, just an athlete. Yes, just figuring he is. it out. Um, Tevin Coleman was back. <laughs> Tevin Coleman. <sighs> Freaking Tevin Coleman, He scored Coleman, twice, man. and I feel – I Mike, I feel intense pain with this because – Thank you. Because I played like seven showdown lineups last Thursday, and I put Tevin Coleman as a captain on three of them. You did it before it was cool. And no, he didn't even get a snap on that game he was activated. Comes into this one, and it's not like Jeff Wilson was lacking. It was just a, you know, 11 touches for Tevin Coleman. Jeff Wilson was great. Both yes. of these guys looked so fast, which is This like, was their best offensive performance, I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, Carolina's got a good rush defense, but they didn't yesterday. Uh, I don't think Tevin Coleman is prescriptive, not someone you can use in normal fantasy lineups. We could talk about whether you should pick him up or not as kind of the backup right now, which he clearly has that role. But Jeff Wilson looked just just super good, healthy. He's back. All right, we have a few more to talk about, but a quick break first. I didn't want to gloss over a few more names here at the running back position because I think they're per, they're pretty important and prescriptive. McCaffrey? Got it done, scored again, 12 targets. That's the important number. Manal Baker might not play. You have a different head coach, but McCaffrey's always in your lineup. Yes. Damian Pierce looked that, great again, 26 for 99 and a touchdown. Did you see that run mm-hmm. down to the three where he broke about – it was the most Marshawn run you've ever seen. He broke tackle after tackle and stayed upright. No, yeah, he, he's, he, great. he is looking great. The he's running getting, back eight. He's getting all the work, and he's involved even in the passing game. Five targets. If he can get five targets a week, he he can't be on your bench. Yeah, and they won, he can be and on they won the ball game. He can definitely be on your bench this week, though. By week? By week. Okay. Yeah, not going to put up big numbers. Whoa. Kyle, this stat, Damian Pierce, 17 missed tackles forced on runs versus the Jaguars. That's the most that pro football focus has ever charted. In a single game? No, you, you, it was all in one run, Mike. I mean, that one <laughs> run was 17 different broke. It was unbelievable. They never and charted the beast quick. I mean, you, he's not a huge player, right? And I've been on record saying that, you know, Travis Etienne is shrinking. Right. Pierce is not huge, but man, does he have a center of gravity. It's incredible. He's a really, really good player. Raheem Mostert, 18 for 113 and one. He missed another Here touchdown. He missed another touchdown by a millimeter. 
95% of snaps. This is an every down player at the ripe young age of 30 at the running back position. Obviously, this game was, if, if, if you weren't intimately aware, this game became very weird for the Dolphins because you had a banged up Tyreek and a banged up Waddle, and then Teddy Bridgewater goes down to the immediately. concussion immediately, and in comes Skyler, un undrafted rookie. This guy didn't go; th he wasn't a seventh round pick. He's a rookie, and he gets to play an NFL game. So you know, I don't know how much that affected just keeping Raheem there and and saying we're we're going to run the ball now. But he looked great. He looks just as fast as he always has. And the trends even before this game were. He's taking over. So until an injury happens, I think Raheem Mostert is just a weekly start. I've got an idea for fantasy players. People will be done with Chase Edmonds, but the draft capital was semi-high. If you have Raheem Mostert and you don't have Chase Edmonds, I recommend targeting that person that wants to drop him anyways seeing if you can get him on the super cheap because sure. what Jason said at the end is absolutely right. An injury would change it. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to play Chase unless that injury happens, but you would have the backfield on lockdown. Like basically if you have Raheem Mostert at 90% of snaps or you have no Mostert, then Chase gets everything. You're in like win-win situation, not a sure. committee situation. Yeah, or or if Chase just gets dropped, then target him yeah, if yeah. you're the, the Mostert manager. Who, which one's Jamie Lee Curtis? That was oh, Mostert, Mostert? From, the, from the Freaky Friday discussion. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, and he did he did this work with only three targets in this game with the quarterback change. Ramondre had the third most rushing yards ever under Bill Belichick with 161 against Detroit. Pretty good matchups coming up as well. And then Saquon, who I mean Saquon is just really really good yep. at playing running back. He's fantastic. Scared the crap out of everybody. Got dropped on his shoulder. Uh, was clearly hobbled, went, he left. Locker went, room. Went to the locker room. And, Happy juice. And then he came back, and it was like nothing was wrong. Yes, Gabe Davis, three for 171 <laughs> and two touchdowns. <laughs> uh, it is rare that a player leads the league in receiving yards with three receptions. That's impressive. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really holding it against uh, Gabe Davis to only have six targets here. They didn't need him in the second half. Diggs, 11 targets, 8 for 102. Both of these guys play Kansas City next week. Oh, yes. Let's go. That game's going to be so much fun. Oh, man. Is that a, uh, Kyle, is that a, what time is that game? It's just an afternoon game. Boring. What? what? Flex that thing to. to well, we probably got to get another Broncos primetime game. Well, I was going to say it might as well be an island game because they don't play anybody in the afternoon anymore. Yeah, what was happened that three to games that? yesterday? Uh, Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf were uh, monsters again. All right. They get Arizona next week. Oh, oh. Diami oh, Brown. Uh, well, that'll be an interesting discussion. Tyler on, Lockett. On the, uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> DK Metcalf will be with Byron Murphy, unless Murphy, that injury keeps him out, in which case, both, both. players. <laughs> Diami Brown had two touchdowns. Uh, they were both from, I mean, two receptions, two touchdowns. He came in with no uh, Jahan Dotson. And um, McLaurin didn't come in and make no, the splash he, he wanted. It was Diami Brown. Yeah, the the Tennessee Titans defense. We we you know I was big on Terry McLaurin this week because of what the Tennessee Titans defense has been giving up in big plays. Sound process. Then it was Diami Brown. Thankfully, if you're a part of the DFS pass, another week in a row where the DFS dart throw was a big yeah, hit. Can I, can I can we cut in here for a second? Let's do it. I think Matthew Betts asked for a pay raise because of this performance he, he in the did. DFS pass. We have he let did. him go. Uh, you don't, wow. You don't ever ask me for you a dollar. you got to establish dollar. dominance. That's right. Okay. Uh, so if you are also great um, at DFS, we have an opening. Wow. <laughs> All um, right. But you gotta, you got to be as good but, as him. But also nice job, Betts. Yeah, oh, you did great work for us yeah. in the past. This isn't a Matt Rule firing. No. This is a like you went out on top. Right. Yeah. But um, peace out. You got greedy. Justin Jefferson was a monster Cooper Cup, always great, although that offense in Los Angeles has troubles, uh, the offensive line, that is. Jacoby Myers, eight targets, seven for 111 and one on the return, and that was with Bailey Zappi. Zap, zap. Zap, zap, zap. You got zapped. Um, 
Yeah, uh, uh, if you were listening to Sunday Live, Mike was encouraging people yep. to pick up Jacoby Myers, stash him. He's been really, really good. Jacoby Myers has been great. Yeah, for a long time. This is, but but this is like he's always just been a like a, a wide receiver three in PPR that you know is going to be really safe with the targets. But he just ne- he, he's been he's been great this year. Occasionally, scoring helps players, and he had, oh certainly he had gone so long without scoring. Hey, here's a my guy that worked out. My, Mike right. Williams, 10 yeah. for 134, a dominating performance on 13 targets. 10 targets per game since uh, week two without Keenan, and that's nice to see. That's all. Yeah. Hollywood Brown. Gabe Davis was my guy. We got, we got no, some I, hits. No, I'm speaking for myself. Oh, okay. I'm speaking, right. speaking for myself. Allen Robinson was also my guy. <clears throat> yeah. He's not being mentioned in this segment. With this stuff, well, There's another segment. <laughs> yeah. There's another more. Um, oh, no. Hey, look, he, he, he didn't work. it didn't work for McVeigh and it didn't work for me. Hollywood Brown, though. Hollywood Brown is a top five wide receiver, 10 targets, 8 for 78, scored another touchdown on a great play. He has uh, been over the 10 target mark for four consecutive weeks. Since Kyler said it. And when you said uh, he's a top five wide receiver, you're not sharing an opinion of you think he's – you're saying he's the wide receiver five in fantasy. Like, he is actually, for fantasy football, a top five wide receiver right now. He's been great. Yeah, and he makes great play. I mean, he made – he would have had a monster day. He he had his first kind of drop of the year on a slant pass that was a well-designed play, and he probably – he might have housed that thing. But but a lot of people want to know, what, what are you going to do with Hollywood once DeAndre Hopkins comes back? Because you got one more game, and then Hopkins is back – my opinion is that he's still going to be at a pretty good target number, probably six to nine a week with a higher potential for big plays. Hopkins will resort to the route bush on the left side. I just don't know where Hollywood's going to line up. That is the, the question mark for me because that left side, they like to plant DeAndre Hopkins there, and that's where he's been running every week. Yeah, I think he's going to completely take the A.J. Green role, and A.J. Green will be on the sidelines for the majority of the games once Hopkins comes back. So that's my expectation. They did once. You don't uh, think some slot snaps for Hollywood? Uh, sure. They'll, they'll involve him there a little bit as well, kind of in the, how Greg Dortch has been involved. What they want to do, though, is they want Hollywood and Hopkins on the outside and have Rondale in the slot. That's like their... Prefer, I think that is what they hope at full strength that they're going to be able to do. They want to be able to continue to throw to Rondale way behind the line of scrimmage uh, and lose yards. Amari Cooper, 12 targets, 7 for 76 and a touchdown. He is, he's been a difficult start because I think he's ping-ponging between being the Amari Cooper of old and uh, disappointing you. I mean, he's had yeah. three big weeks. Three yeah, not small, ten. but big, yeah. And then two disappearing acts but i guess you just keep playing yeah, yeah he's just it's it's adjusting the expectations of he's not your wide receiver one but he gives you those numbers you know more than 50 percent of the time Taysom hill four touchdowns okay nine, we've already talked about nine that. for one 12 and three on the on. ground we're moving on uh jason made the point you could probably start him while we're waiting for winston and these wide receivers to come back He's always going to be touchdown dependent the thing that you didn't realize was that he could score four of them in one game I my gamble, my gamble on him was the rib injury had kept them out of practice all week. And then it's like, okay, if he scores a touchdown, a touchdown, you're happy. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't score, he's probably like five for 20 on the ground. Exactly. Little did we know nine for one, 12 and three with a passing touchdown was in the cards. Mark Andrews, great game. Hayden Hurst. The Hayden Hurst story is a scary one because it feels a little bit like Tyler Conklin. The, 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 it could go bad if you play Hayden Hurst. But the problem is is that Joe Burrow's throwing the ball close to the line of scrimmage despite the fact that he doesn't have to. <laughs> it, I mean, his protection was pretty good, and he still did it. It was interesting. It like it seemed like the coach was was trying to lean into revenge here for Hayden Hurst to go put up some points on his old team. Uh because he had the touchdown, and then they went to him again when they were, I think, inside the 10. They tried to get Hurst another touchdown. So I think that was more a uh, – they didn't have T. Higgins for the game, and let's get this uh, – let, let's get our guy some points against his old team. Dallas Goddard, 8 for 95. Great game. They use him in this, like, kind of underneath screen game all the time. And he's always open, and he always will be. Sure. Because when you have two – outside wide receivers like that, and you can run at quarterback, 
the linebackers have to stay home a little bit, and it just opens up out route after out route for Dallas Goddard. David Njoku, 6 for 88, seems very reliable right now. Yes, he does. And then Evan Ingram, uh, hey, how's it going? 6 for 69 for Evan Ingram after a couple of dead, dud performances, setting you up for another one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's probably true, but there will be. Yeah. I mean, there, you, you, there are people that lost uh, a tight end like Pat Fryermuth, and then there are – Others on by this coming week, Hawkinson. So there's going to be – you're going to need to decide between a Hayden Hurst and Evan Ingram uh, on the waivers this week. Yeah, and, and I we, we do recommend psychological care if you are one of the people that, like, sign Tyler Conklin, and then you're going to now do the reactionary move to Ingram, and then you're going to – the Conklin will be all right when he's on the waiver wire, and, mm -hmm. you know, you, we know where this is going. Oh, yeah. And it's a scary place. Ready to talk some duds? Yep. Pooped in his big boy pants. At quarterback, really, the Jared Goff story is the only one worth discussing. A lot of people kind of maybe took the chance on putting him in there. Goff had been so good and uh, got so shut out. It was so good. Amon Ra was active in this game. Didn't really play much. Got targeted when he was on the field, but it was more of a Amon Ross clearly not ready to play. Had superstar TJ Hawkinson off yeah, of his hot do? week. Well, yeah, we'll what talk about it? him in what a second. Oh, okay, <laughs> oh, no. we will. We... Oh. <sighs> yeah, the, uh, that was a shutout. Yeah. yeah. Running back duds. Uh, this guy's becoming a regular. Oh, this is. Najee Harris. This is an important running back to talk about. Six quarters with a new quarterback, four total targets. He is a volume back. Najee is someone that is making fantasy points based upon maximum utilization and involvement in the receiving game. Currently, he is not being involved in the receiving game any more than your average leading running back for your team, and that's not what made him special. So there, are, there should be some some alarms going off in your head. He is uh his through 5 weeks he's on pace for 234 rushes for 754 rushing yards. That's 3.2 a carry. 44 receptions for 217 yards. He's yeah. currently the running back 29. Yeah. And coming up. It's not getting better. Is, is his schedule here coming up oh, for Najee no. Harris is uh <laughs> yeah. so a little bit brutal because we go from Buffalo to Tampa Bay. Miami, that's that's fine. On the road. But then it's right into Philadelphia and then a bye week. So and then New Orleans on the way out. Yeah. And the Bengals. And then the Bengals. Goodness gracious. We didn't want to make him a bust. No. We had to. Yeah. Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon. Speaking of, how are we how are we feeling on uh these Green Bay running backs? Not great. A lot better about Aaron Jones than AJ Dillon. Sure. Uh I mean he run currently the running back thirty one. Nine points here for Aaron Jones on the week. You have, I mean, you have two games where you're pleased with the outcome for Aaron Jones. Yeah, it's the Aaron Jones experience, though. Yeah, it really is. I mean, he's kind of a back and forth explosive player that'll have his monster games and then he'll disappoint you. But he, you know, but at least he has explosive plays. Right. And uh, his utilization was there. I'm not uh, too worried. Next week, you get the New York Jets. You'd expect both these guys to have a bounce back. Uh, I don't know if you play AJ Dillon right now. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't. I don't see the logic well, in it. You haven't had any. He hasn't scored since week one. He hasn't had double digits since week one. He. It just feels a little scary, but maybe against the Jets, he's a that, good. That was a good it. It was play. the matchup with the Jets, and then the Manders after that. I, I guess Moster just looked pretty good. I against think he's them. he's in an, he's in play as a, a low end flex. No, you're right. You're right. Ezekiel Elliott, twenty two for seventy eight. It's just part of the plan, everybody. It's part of the plan. What's the plan again? That we uh we just you just ride it out, make sure that he's still getting the volume. <laughs> the whole career or just, nope, no, just no. another week. Twenty two carries. That's the important thing. The zero targets, that part really sucks, but the twenty two carries, you know, in a game where Pollard had a huge explosive run, a, a big time touchdown. Zeke still getting the volume, gets the Eagles next week. That's not great. That's not great, but it's part of the plan. And then then And them. then and then you unleash him against the Detroit Lions and the Chicago Bears. So if you want the TLDR of that conversation, Pollard, big game against the Lions and Bears coming up. <laughs> uh, Very possible. Cam Akers might be toast. Oh, yes. 13 for 33. 
Daryl Henderson had zero carries, so it wasn't like they pivoted to a better option here. Came in on third downs, that, caught a few passes. That team, that offense. If it's, you're not Cooper Cup, maybe Tyler Higby. No, no, Higby's still fine, but it's not it, like the, you're not starting Stafford. What sucks for Tyler Higby is you're like, I'm not gonna get a touchdown. It's <laughs> he's so he's dominating in targets, receptions, yards. But you're not going to get a touchdown. He's Zach Ertz. He's a poor man's sure. Zach Ertz yeah, right yeah. now. It's just he's that's going fair. to be catching a lot of short targets and falling down. But uh, that's pretty good for tight end. That is the player I would trade away, by the way. Higby. Oh, yes. No, Zach no. Ertz. Oh, Zach Ertz. Yes. Zach Ertz because uh, – He's expiring. Yeah, agree. he's expiring. And Rondell Moore, they actually uh, passed him the ball beyond the line of scrimmage, which, by the way, is first eight touches of the year. One total yard because they were all behind the line of scrimmage. Nice. They did throw him the ball in the middle of the field. Hollywood Hopkins, and nice. then Rondale going to make Zach Ertz expiring. Jamal Williams, bad game. James Robinson, this was the biggest disappointment maybe mm -hmm. at the running back position. 10 for 27. J.K. Dobbins, discussions to be had here as well. There might not be a ceiling for J.K. Dobbins. Gus Edwards will be back at some point. Kenyon Drake was being used in this game. Uh, the snap count since his debut, 43, 50, 40. Um, what, what what's the temperature here? I mean, like, yeah. I'm not excited about Dobbins. Yeah, no, the, the ceiling here for Dobbins is touchdowns. He's been good at scoring touchdowns in his short career, uh, but obviously if he doesn't get those, he's not a pass catching back. So, you know, he's not game script proof. And this is a team that hasn't been running the ball well without, uh, you know, great running backs there. So, uh, you know, we didn't expect a great game against Cincinnati. Very difficult, uh, line to run against. The Giants are next week, and you okay. know we need to start changing our our expectations about the Giants team. And Agreed. the defense looks legit. I mean, we just right Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon they were in the busts this week, so it's probably another poor matchup. So I think Dobbins looks like a player that is just in that consideration of probably your flex option, and you're you're judging him on a matchup every week about who else you have on your roster. Tyler Algier, Caleb Huntley, uh, where Fab goes to die this week <laughs> yeah. against Tampa Bay. It's not, you know, you're, you're still gambling. <laughs> if you're starting a running back, I think the biggest thing to look at is 13 to 8 on the carry count. Neither got any targets, but you are using both players. So that is well, makes it harder to feel confident about Algier against San Francisco or Cincinnati the next two weeks. Targeting your running backs is... It's not high T right. for for Arthur Smith. That's not part of the plan. Yeah. Even though it begins with the letter T, it's still not high T. Right. It's lower case T. Oh. He, he calls them passes. So it doesn't start because with He T. calls them forward passes. Right. You need him to be high P. <laughs> right. Well, Woo. I, what? Uh, James Robinson, 10 for 27. <laughs> we talked about it. It was concerning. Yep. Uh, I'm sure Al was disappointed. I was, a lot of people were disappointed, but Al especially, very much so. And uh, the, the do you have cons like that's now two weeks in a row of like where the big play didn't happen? Eight for twenty nine against the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, the Eagles, explain it away. But ten for twenty seven against the Houston Texans. How do you explain that one away? Would have been nice if you scored on the goal line. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to explain that one away. You, you've got um, a player who came back from the Achilles and had a couple big runs. If you, you know, maybe he just needs those, but he's not a long speed type of player usually. So the the uh, the breakaway runs were surprising. I, I mean, right now you're probably just going to keep starting him until he proves that he has lost something. Yeah, maybe just a bad week. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, I have to read you the stat line for Chase Edmonds. One for one. Yes, 100%. <laughs> two two targets for zero. And oh, uh, if you didn't, at the top, we talked about Mostert's uh, takeover. 95% he, he, of snaps after 70% last week, 53 the week before. It It's just, I mean, Chase Edmonds played fewer snaps than Miles Gaskin, who I didn't remember was still in the roster. Yeah, the game, I mean, the game was a blowout towards the end, so they did pivot kind of back Starters away. out. Yeah. yeah. But that hurts, though, but, right? Oh, it hurts big time. It, it does, gas, does, doesn't man. feel good. Devin Singletary, bad game. Didn't need him. Six for 42. Looked good on the ground. He did. He had some nice runs, but he didn't matter. He always does. He always does. It's vol you give the man enough work. Mostert or Singletary moving forward? 
Mostert. Mostert or Singletary, volume. yeah. I, I think Mostert. Uh, Asking yeah, for I'll, a friend. <laughs> I will I will I take mean, Mostert. I, I mean, I still assume at some point Mostert's not going to be able to finish the season if he's getting this volume. Um, but I, I want every game that he's going to be playing going he's forward. Fast. He's so Very fast. fast. Uh, all right, Antonio Gibson. Here we go. Here we go, Mike. Oh. Three carries for six yards. I mean, it was it's it was curtains already, for Gibby. <laughs> it's curtains for the Manders running back. Yeah. It's this is a this is a good buy. Antonio Gibson. Farewell. It You I mean, burned like like a He burned like David like Johnson. A Forty watt bulb. He uh we, we got two great seasons from Antonio Gibson. That's a hit. And now it's it's curtains. Time to say goodbye. I will say, I mean, this From game, our company. this game against Tennessee, Brian Robinson got a few opportunities. Uh, they're going to give him more. They're going to give him more opportunities. This was his first game back after a first week of practice. So, they, it was basically a three-headed rotation. You you had all three backs involved. Uh, nine carries for Robinson for twenty-two yards. No one looked great. Uh, well, that's three times the carries of Gibson. Right, exactly. So he got, got the work. Yeah, I think it will. Don't I mean? Are you disagreeing? Or are you agreeing that I he's going to start getting more work? I am uh, saying that it's probably an irrelevant move of more work. Like he, I don't think he's going to get. It, it would take Gibson going away and Gibson get, getting absolutely no snaps for one of those two guys to be a startable, reliable fantasy asset. Mike, it, I agree. I think we're going to have a, you're going to have a three person timeshare here. At Robinson's the one you want, but it's going to be touchdown or bust. Yeah, I would much rather have Robinson than than Gibson yeah. for sure. I just think both are going to be really irrelevant if if JD McKissick is still in the pass catching role and they're splitting the rest of of, of an ugly pie. Uh, it's not going to be a, a player that you can reliably say I want to start this guy this week. I think in about three or four weeks you'll have about fifteen to eighteen. It could. Carry opportunities for it's. It, I'm I'm still Robinson. for stashing Robinson, but it's going to take some time. Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, AJ Brown, Jamar Chase. Man. Why? Jamar. So you threw him in the duds with a seven for fifty. Yeah, I, I think most people are. Uh, look, put it this way: I played against Jamar Chase in in one of our main leagues. I was thrilled. I felt like he stunk for what you expect him to okay. do. Jamar right. Chase, no T Higgins. Against the Baltimore Ravens, for him to end up with seven for fifty is is a, a catastrophe. Okay, twelve targets. So it was going his way, just didn't didn't work out. Right. Well, because he needs the true number one on the field to take the coverage away. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like he takes the coverage away to let Higgins. Is it breathe? Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. Um. That's why Higgins has been so amazing. <laughs> Uh, Tyler Boyd, whatever. C.D. Lamb, eight targets, five for fifty-three. A come down game for him. Yeah, disappointing. Uh, Drake London knew it was going to happen. Yeah, that was that was not not a good one. Uh, Chris Godwin, six for sixty-one. You expected more. Yeah, in, that was in this game. That was very disappointing. Um, you you definitely expected more, and and he got most of that work early. It looked like he was going to have a great game, and then really went quiet. I do believe his snaps they they pulled them way down in the second half. All right, Christian Kirk has finally slowed down. Just one for 11 in this game. The best game for fantasy purposes was Marvin Jones. So Zay Jones came back, was just three for 12. Those two players combined for under 25 total receiving yards. Like, it was just a bad, bad game for Jacksonville's offense. Jacksonville yeah. looked terrible. They did not – did they Did they score a touchdown no. in no, this no, no, game? No, 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 they had six points, right? Yeah, so, you, I mean, this, is, this was as bad as their offense has looked all season. That being said – behind you know eight targets for zay jones you got to keep him on your radar i don't think it's always going to be this bad the hard part is you don't have a long history of jacksonville being a good offense with trevor lawrence that it freaks you out a little bit about bad games agreed romeo dubs he so he had a terrible game five targets three for 29 but behind the scenes he had a really good game still leading the team in uh you know snaps and routes and targets on the season um in most of the metrics he He's still doing really, really well. This was obviously a terrible game for the Packers in London in general. They came out, looked great in the very beginning, and then did nothing on offense the rest of the game. I was a little concerned. Were you? 
I mean, they, yeah, I mean, but, uh, Randall Cobb had 13 targets in this game. Was definitely first read on a lot of these plays. How'd that go? <laughs> I mean, maybe don't make <laughs> Randall Cobb your primary receiving option. Uh, Christian Watson uh, got injured. He reaggravated the hamstring injury. I don't know for sure if it, uh, technically if it's a reaggravation of the same hamstring or the the other one. I assume it's a reaggravation of the one that he's been uh, dealing with. But if he is out going forward, then Lazard, Dobbs, I think they're they're uh, still good plays. What about Randall Cobb? Yeah, it, I'm not chasing after this one. If you want to stash him in a deep league, that's fine. But I'm I would not play him until we you see another game where he actually has a pulse Adam Thielen Brandon Cooks down weeks for both of those guys yep any concerns moving forward uh I mean Adam Thielen is just adjusting the expectations of of what he is which is like a a flex or a bye week fill-in type of a player at right now I mean it, it, the momentum was building for him so I guess it's, it is extra disappointing to see it fall apart where when Justin Jefferson had such a big game and then let's talk about Jets wide receivers they didn't Need them or Tyler Conklin in this game? Correct. Yeah, Garrett, uh, they scored 40 points? Yes. Is that right? They scored 40 points. Garrett Wilson sucked. Elijah Moore sucked. Corey Davis sucked. And uh, Conklin sucked. That seems impossible. But when you get a bunch of short fields, you know, they, they had the, the undrafted rookie on the other side having turnovers, giving them a short field, and then you get 200 of your offensive yards go to Brees Hall. There just wasn't a need or a lot left for anyone. Cutting Elijah Moore? Yeah, he's. I mean, there's there's definitely waiver wire pickups that we'll talk about tomorrow. I would rather have than more. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, one for six. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that sounds about how, right. He, how does that happen? I now, mean, last week you were sitting here not offering me Hawkinson for pits. Uh, Any correct. change in view? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want him? Uh, no, no, okay. I don't. So there's an official rejection. It's an official of, rejection. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I would only offer it because uh, it's Kyle a and I, week. Kyle and I, every every evening we climb we climb the hill, and we uh, we pour the Kool Aid. <laughs> you just uh, and talk about Kyle Pitts and how great he's going to be. Yeah, and then we just cheers with the, with the Kool Aid and we I, we sip it. If only he gets his chance. I honestly think it, Any like, week he now. he has a chance to be tight end one rest of the the 2026 season is just I, I think he could be the best tight end of that season um 2026 gonna be a big, nice i'm calling it now i mean i'm gonna be the first one to say it that that he, he's okay, gonna be great there Mark i just wish Ho like hawkinson is the so his season is like the piece of bread where you put the big clump of butter on it right and you're supposed to smooth that in both directions right, but right? You like because it's cold yeah so it's just stuck in one spot and you got that one week of 40 points and if you could mm -hmm. just spread it just spread it to the left. Spread it to the right. You'd enjoy the whole piece of bread. That ain't no dinner butter. That is breakfast that, yeah, butter. That's it breakfast is butter. Cold, it, bald butter and you know, what sure. Kind? That, what kind? Like a bald? Bald. bald. What's a bald? Never butter? heard bald, bald butter. butter. It's like balled up. It's think, rolled up. Oh, <laughs> you know, like the butter. I thought balls. it was like you. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, like losing I hair. A follicle I don't like hair on my butter. Like I am. I don't either. Fully against hairy butter. That's that's <laughs> that's midnight butter. Yeah. Um, George Kittle five for forty seven. Okay, okay. I, I, I think yeah, that's that wasn't, not a dud. No, I, I well, he had the so. fumble, so his fantasy output was bad. We were all hearing the word bald, b a l d, by the yes. way, because Kyle was yes. dying <laughs> in Deucer's Alley. I was like, I guess if it's smooth, it kind of looks like a bald head. I, I, I was totally with you. I was like, <laughs> I didn't realize like a ball of butter, yeah. which might have been the phrase to go with. It might have been for some lesser man. Yeah, Robert Tunyon, four for 23. Zach Ertz, six for 48. Gerald Everett, one for two. This was That's, the biggest. Yes. The injury, but also the – I mean, he was out there. Yeah. And I Donald Parham, Parham was back. They used uh, 12 personnel more often, but n none, of the, none of the tight ends did anything there. Uh, and that wasn't even the worst of it. The, <laughs> the Goose Crew, Conklin, <laughs> Howard, and Schultz combined for three targets, no catches – so who would have thought in our in our DFS lineup? Yeah, oh you boy. made oh the boy. better play at tight end than I did. That's right, because we both got zero points, but I paid more. For ours, right, ours right. was very cheap. Yeah, right. we got what we paid for. We got the cheapest zero we could get. You betcha. Um, I don't think Evan Ingram was very much more expensive, and I, I was looking his way, and I just didn't have the heart. I, I prefer zero from Howard. 
Yeah, you taking Evan Ingram would be like Mike taking Taysom Hill. It's just it would have been hard, it would have been good decisions for both of us this <laughs> for this week. It yeah, would have been a good good idea. But we're men of principles. Rashad Penny is officially out for the season. Oh yeah. man! So tomorrow's waiver show, which we'll get to um, soon. Tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point, Mike. It will happen tomorrow. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Monday. It's Monday, and this show's over. We're done. Uh, we've got a Monday night football game tonight, though. Hopefully, you get what you need so you can get that W, and we'll be back with the waiver show tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for supporting the show. Maybe you leave us a little, uh, little five-star review if you're feeling amorous. Tell, tell a friend. Maybe subscribe. Hit that button. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.